What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we are checking back in on the release client of a game that we covered the demo for probably about seven or eight months ago. We played a very limited demo of this game. It's a game called Fabledom. Fabledom is a title that's focusing on making a whimsical city builder that still manages to incorporate some of the attributes and things that make something like Crusader Kings kind of fun. That might be actually a little bit overselling what the game is. Uh, if you've ever played Foundation, this game is kind of like the fabled out kind of whimsical Lion's Head Studio version of that. Uh, this is a game where you are a liege lord who has control of a territory. Your goal is to expand out and buy neighboring plots of land and expand your claims and expand your family and have marriages and make alliances and make sure you don't get wiped out by war or famine or anything else, but they've topped it off with kind of like an adorable, like, tee-hee, tongue-in-cheek kind of graphical style, which honestly I think is a really good idea. I like it when you've actually got kind of, like, dark, worrisome themes going on, but you're able to package it in kind of like a funny candy coating. I always find that to be a really compelling idea. So today we're going to be diving on into Fabledom and seeing if the game is a lot of fun. So today we're going to be diving on into Fabledom, and we're going to see if the game is a lot of fun. Since the game came out in April, I think, we covered the demo in like January or February, and I think the game came out in April, like a couple weeks after, and I felt bad because I had to tell the developers, like, I can't recover a game inside that short-term window, but I'll check it out once we get out to like six months to a year. Uh, it's had one major content patch during that time, but the developers have been very proactive on Steam talking about what they're working on, constantly pushing out kind of those text updates with screenshots and GIFs and stuff like that. So I think you can rest well assured that the game is being worked on. But if after watching this you wanted to get Fabledom's early access for yourself, you can absolutely do that down below in the description. I will have a link for you. Aside from that, you can also find a link to my Twitch stream and my Discord. I am frequently live on most days of the week. Four days of the week. I'm trying to move up to five days of the week. I've been streaming more towards full-time, putting up like 30 hours a week. I want to get up to like 40 or 40 hours a week, but it hasn't happened yet just because video making is very time-consuming. And so I'm trying to find like that perfect equitable balance where I'm still putting out content here on YouTube while also spending a huge amount of time on Twitch because I've just been having a blast streaming. So anyways, you can check those links out down there before I start gushing too much about what I've been up and after. What's going on inside of our little fabledom society? Well, we're kind of picking up where we left off the last time we played the game. So when we played the demo, I think I stopped around here or the demo stopped around here. But I've got a basic hamlet that's kind of hanging out. Uh, they are teaching me things. They are tutorializing. This is probably about 30 minutes on into the game, which is good for our first impressions, especially if you've played anything like Banished before, like the ideas and the concepts from this game are going to become instantly obvious. And so I've played a ton of Banished over the years. And so this is our city right here. We've got a stockpile over on this side where you can see all of our cool stuff stacked up to the rafters. We've got little houses. This, use ga this game uses kind of like an interesting building system where every single house needs to have a yard. And inside the yard, they have like little randomized doodads just to break the place apart and make it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, they kind of randomize the way the fences are built and like the way the house attaches to the fences just to break apart the monotony of stamped out buildings as far as the eye can see like you would have in something like Anno. But for right now, I've actually found the game to be intensely charming. Our current goals are just to tax the peasantry on into the ground until they break. And so, you know, we're doing the liege laird thing. Uh, we've also apparently got to select some fablings with the overview menu. So let me handle that real fast. So at this point in the game, we've become successful enough as a lord where we can claim like a neighboring tile. Let's have a look around here, and as you can see, this game has very pleasant graphics. Like, I think they've done an incredible job with this game. I'm normally not wildly attracted to sort of, like, whimsical graphical sets and whatnot. I tend to prefer things that are a little bit grittier, a little bit darker, a little bit more realistic. But I do have kind of, like, a sucker spot for whimsy that's pulled off in a very nice stylized way. And look at the way, I think those hills are actually 2D sprites or 2D models that they've hung up in the background, but they've got it looking just right. Like, such a gorgeous little game to just ogle, just to take a look at. I think there's iron right there, and I think I want the iron deposit is what I think I want, and so I think we should go for it. This side right here, it does give you a little collated list of all the things that exist inside of various areas. Apparently, there's an ant over there named Bob. 
Um, we can go meet Bob the Ent if we wanted to do so. It looks like there's some ruins over here. It looks like there's an iron deposit and I think a herd of pigs on this side. I think that would probably do nicely for keeping us both fed and also stocked up with objects that we can stab other whimsical people with, which is always a concern, right? What do we think about whenever we take over a new property, we all think to ourselves, what is the best way to stab the guy next door? I, I think that's the, the natural process that the human mind goes through. You move in, you start paying on the morgue, and you think to yourself, well, how do I, how do I strategically kind of knife the neighbor and take his stuff if it comes down to it? That's a totally well-adjusted thing that we all do. I think we can admit that inside of this safe place. And, and so, you know, the iron will give us a lot more access to stabby objects that might make things a little bit safer for us. The other thing that I was looking at is we're not full up on our population right now. You get immigrants from time to time based on how happy everybody is. Uh, so there's another immigrant or two right there, but all of our houses are full. So we're probably going to work on the suburbs a little bit before we get any deeper on into the game. Let's go ahead and we'll drop a house over here. And this house, yeah, just go ahead and like fill in space, I guess. Like, we've got a lot of stuff going on. We're not really going to be able to use any of this space. So we'll just add a new house and we'll finalize it right there. And this will be like our first little burb, our first little stockpile, so on and so forth. There's lots of decorative objects inside of this game. I don't know if they make people happier or whatever, but I'm a sucker for cypress trees. I like cypress trees. I grew up having actually rows of cypress trees. I think there's 12 or 15 of them that blocked the property boundary of our backyard. Uh, because our neighbor behind us, it was clear whoever, like, 50 years ago built the house, they planted the cypress trees on purpose. Because the house behind ours was two stories and looked directly into our yard, basically. So you can tell they planted all the cypress trees as, like, a line of sight block uh, so that you would have some privacy in your backyard. But I grew up with cypress trees blocking off the back fence line in my house. And so I've always been kind of nostalgic about cypress trees. I very much want to take down this material cart right here. Unfortunately, it hasn't really been an option so far. I, I want to break this guy, but I think we can get around breaking that guy if we put, like, a granary right here. Now, I don't know if the granary is going to need to have, like, a paddock. It doesn't look like it needs a paddock, so that's good. Uh, it doesn't need to have, like, a footprint made like all these little houses do and whatnot. I like to imagine that this is, like, a little communal area where everybody hangs out. You know, they have little barbecues over here. They, have, they, they, they put some ribs on the slow cooker, you know what I mean? Some nice low and slow. Throw some chicken wings and some drumsticks up inside the smoker. That kind of stuff. Communal activities. So what I'm really hoping will happen here is I put down the granary specifically so they would clear out this cart. And I'm hoping that when they clear out this cart, it will disappear so that I can make like a central road that runs back this way. And we can continue building off into this valley. Because after all, Ass Grotto must grow. That's right, this is a place where we respect donkeys. We have many of them. We based our entire society on it. There's a frog on my on my flag, like on my, my family crest. Hey, and it worked exactly the way I wanted it to. Good. I like it when things happen exactly the way I want them to. We'll run that road back to there. I don't know exactly how that's going to benefit us for right now, but from there, I think we just got to run the clock for a little bit and make some money off taxes. It appears as though we've received a letter, so I'm guessing this is going to be our introduction to some kind of intrigue, or maybe we're going to get a girlfriend or something. I don't know. It's Winifred. Dearest Prince, my shining crusader. Well, I mean, I feel like I'm more of kind of an administrator of a podunk full of toothless morons. If that qualifies as a shining crusader, then you got me. Uh, but in these treacherous times, even a warrior's heart seeks a haven. My marshals tell me that your territory is fertile and easily fortified and that you are athletic. Mayhap an alliance is an order of both heart and sword. Impress me. Man, with the demands. How about you impress me? Why is it always my job? Why is it my job to impress you, lady? How, how, come you're not, how come you're not vying for my attention? First and foremost, this just seems a little bit biased. You're like, why am I the guy that has to prove? Have you seen my stack of boxes? I feel like that more than proves the truth of my character. Look at the stack of boxes. Every man of worth has a stack of boxes. Look, these ones even have little chain hook thingies on them. Chain hook thingies. Here you can see the rain effects. They are very, very tastefully done. In fact, all the wagon ruts and all the low-lying areas on the map fill up with puddles. 
they've got some kind of algorithm that decides where to put the puzzle, where, where to put the puddles, and it's quite good. It actually kind of seems to settle the water exactly where you think it would go. And there's little details like water running off of the actual eaves of the roof and whatnot. Very, very cool stuff, man. There's a lot of details here, and you guys know what I always say. The existence of little details usually implies how a game is going to turn out when it gets through early access. The developers that take the time and they take the care to do those little details because it matters to them... They tend to come out with a really good product so long as they don't run out of money at some point. And so, like, I I like it. I like it a lot. So we do have an inn right here. We've got to figure out a spot where we can put... You know what? These bushes are just not working out for me. Yeah, like, we put those there just as part of the tutorial. But they're blocking what is kind of the perfect place for a drinking establishment. And one of my objectives is to bring, make everybody happy through the power of alcohol, which, fair enough, that's one of the few ways to bring a smile to a grown man's face, is, like, the, the careful deployment of alcohol. Sometimes not even the careful deployment, in all honesty. Sometimes you just kind of, like, you know, you whirly bird sprinkler that alcohol out wherever you can. Uh, we've got, are you sure you don't want to welcome all interested visitors? Yeah, that's fine. I only have the one house right now, and so... Until I get a few more housing situations sorted out, it's going to take a little bit. Uh, this is the narrator. The voice actor is very, very, very good. Uh, whoever they hired, they know their way around kind of whimsical storybook voice acting. And so I've been enjoying his performance very much. It hasn't come across corny or obnoxious or anything else like that. It just seems like you kind of have like a helpful grandpa uh, assisting you in creating your fiefdom. Uh, where you're oppressing the peasants and taking their $27 every 24 hours. Look, these people have chickens in their backyard. I've never seen anybody have the chickens in their backyard so far. I've got it set up so that they randomly put stuff in the backyards instead of me selecting because I know I'll end up making it look weird and uniform if I do it that way. The only way for me to have my randomness is to actually make it truly random, which is what I've been trying to do. And so our suburb has grown. We've got a little bit of space left. I actually kind of like the idea of building a road back around this way so that we can fit one more house right here and maybe some decorations in the middle. Taxes are still going up. We're still bringing in more people. I think at 20 people. So basically this game has kind of like these milestones for your growth where it unlocks like 10 more buildings. You go from, you know, squat to hamlet to village to so on and so forth. Like you keep upgrading and getting larger and larger. Hell, we've reached the actual... We've reached the distribution zone of our well as well. I could probably fit another house over there, but we need a coal maker. Okay. Charcoal burners, historically, were typically required to be way out on the edge of town. They didn't even really live in the town. Charcoal burners needed, like, flowing water, from what I recall, in order to actually manufacture charcoal. So we'll probably put a charcoal burn. I mean, what kind of money am I sitting on right now? Barely enough. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to have to put this guy out on the edge of town because it said he lowers everybody's desirability uh, when he's out and about. So, like, wherever we set this guy up is effectively going to kind of be the end of town because we're not going to be able to build any advancements or anything out that way. So I'll put him right here because this keeps him kind of in, like, the working area of our town where people are, like, doing labor so they're not taking a happiness penalty uh, by there being a bunch of charcoal smoke flying all over the place. If you don't know, it's really easy to make charcoal. It's actually super simple. You can try it out. Take a bunch of wood scraps, put them inside an Altoids container, and throw the Altoids container on a fire. Uh, basically, what happens is, in order to make charcoal, you need to wood gasify material. You can do it with paper. You can do it with cloth. You can do it with wood. You can do it with anything. Ultimately, you need the juices to come up out of there, though, that are flammable and condense over, like, a hot heat in an environment where, effectively, those gases can't escape, so they end up soaking the material. And that's how you end up with your coal over there. I used to make char cloth all the time before I would go camping just for easy kindling and whatnot. You just kind of take an Altoids container, or you take, like, a small box that is airtight and just throw a bunch of cloth inside of it, some extra scrap cloth, throw it on the fire for a while. When it comes out, it'll be charred black in there, and if you light it with a match, it'll go up like a torch, just boom. Uh, we have reached our milestone. So nobility. We now have nobility currency that we can use. Uh, we got 75 bucks. We have a messenger's guild so that we can meet other leaders and start rubbing elbows with the who's who. 
of the uh, gentry, I suppose. We also have a wheat crop, so that's pretty cool. So we'll think about, we've got pumpkin crops right now, but I would be okay with doing like another wheat crop back here and wiping out all those trees. Just using this as like the farming area feels pretty good to me. We got 50 more bucks coming in too. Man, I got money coming out of my ears right now. Uh, so we need 15 coal to be produced. They haven't even started producing it yet, so that's going to take a little bit. We need some planks. Uh, so the sawmill, it also has a negative radius. So we'll probably want to keep that over here too. So there's our sawmill. Things automatically attach to roads in this game. You can reface them if you want, but they will automatically face towards roads. This is a road building game as far as I know. I haven't tried building anything isolated from a road yet, but I may later. But the way that everything attaches to a road makes me think that maybe buildings don't function if they're not on a road. I don't know. If I put it over there, will that work? It seems okay with it. Maybe you can. Maybe it's not road-based. I know that some people have like a really strong bias against road-based city builders. They don't like that. They find it constraining. I don't mind either way. I like the organization of a road-based game, but if it's not a road-based game, I don't care either. I'm kind of like, meh, whatever about it. Sawmill is up and running. So let's go ahead and get our guys assigned to producing some logs over here. Well, boards. It was log. It was big and round and wood and better than bad. It's good. Now it's actually just a plank, which planks never really got their own, like, dedicated song. Log did, but it took a long time, like, what, 40, 50,000 years of human history before, like, logs had a song celebrating their logitude? Just like that, winter's upon us. I don't really have too much commentary on winter. I just wanted to show that there are seasonal changes in this game. And they are quite stark. They do look really good. Like, a lot of attention has been paid, uh, I think, to the visual aspect of this game and making it look good and feel good. Prince Splat, Secret Santa, what a childish game. It is below me in my stature. Unfortunately for you, I wasn't given any instructions. So enjoy this. You deserve it. 35 crates of coal. That's perfectly fine. Apparently, I was super naughty this year. We didn't get just, like, one thing of coal. We got a whole bunch of them. Uh, I guess put it right there. Oh, okay. So you've actually got to put the cart somewhere. Uh, we do have room for a messenger post, it would appear. And it looks like the messenger post makes people happy. Uh, so we probably want to put this in, like, a centralized location, I guess. Now, having thrown together a messenger post, I think we're probably going to be introduced to the diplomacy system that exists inside of the game because it's not just you in this game. There's like other lords and stuff as we saw from that message that we got sent. And so we're probably going to have to send your messenger out to another realm. Yeah, let's do that. So we can go out to the world map right here. And this is the world map. Uh, Ask Grotto is a little frog city that just kind of lives along the edge of the ocean right here. I decided to be near this little bay or whatever it might be. But it looks like we can actually send people out to other realms. So let's go meet the neighbor. It's going to cost me 50 bucks to meet the neighbor? Man, expensive neighbors, but I guess gift baskets aren't free. Those edible arrangements, man, they're always going to cost us. Ah, we have another message. Secret Santa's back, and he has given us 75 carrots. Gee, thanks, Santa. I appreciate you. Nothing like 35 carrots to show that you care. Um, I probably need to set up limits on, like, what is being produced. Can I do that? Is that, like, an available option? Because if you look at our wood right here, it's going pretty poorly. Uh, basically, all of it is getting used up on planks and is getting used up on coal. I maxed out the lumber hut, but I don't think it's really going to matter that much. I feel like we're kind of, like, stuck there. So... In the interest of making that better, it may not be a bad idea to get, like, another lumberjack, like, maybe down here or something. I think I've got room where I can run a road right there so they can drop things off at the stockpile without having to go around the horn. But, wood is a problem. It would appear as though we have discovered the realm of Votara. Oh, it's her house! Nice, dude! We found the lady's house that was, like, kind of hitting on us, I guess. Inviting us to, like, impress her. Hail Prince, do you want to speak with me or shall our blades do the talking? Uh, well met. It's nice to meet you. Every realm has a ruler with their own personality. So I've been introduced to a reputation bar over here. 
And it actually looks like we can spy on them as well. So it looks like the game has like a spy system that's in place too, where you can kind of like wheedle out information on your opponents or whatever. All right, fair enough. Flirt, did it work? I, I really don't know if it worked. I don't know if she's flirting with me because she did the wave too, but it's only polite to wave back. So like, I don't know. Uh, either way, we met the neighbors. So there it is. And we got paid $50 for it. Who the central agency is that's giving us $50 for social interaction? I don't know. Does it look like he's sewing right now? Oh, yeah, he is. He's sewing. Good. So it looks like our food supply is pretty solid then. I've been watching our food supply versus, like, how long winter was. And we only went down by, like, 100 food. So we should have, like, a little bit more room to grow, I think. And a little bit more room to stock up, I would think. I do think that we're going to need another lumber mill, though, so I'll think about that. Lumber camp. You should probably go right there. Yeah, that's fine by me. We'll throw that together. You're not altogether that expensive. And they want me to send a message with a gift to another ruler. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I like it a lot. I think the game is pretty cool. I haven't even gotten to the military stuff yet or, like, the defensive stuff. Uh, it looks like... For the most part, the watchtowers and things haven't been implemented in the early access, but it does look like we can get the sword fighter grounds and like the archery stands and the hero quarters and all that kind of stuff too. I'm in love with it. I think the game looks great. It looks great. I think it plays great. I think it's got a nice sense of whimsy. I think the soundtrack is well appointed. I'm having trouble finding a whole lot of things here to pick at and be like, yeah, this is bad, this is bad, and this is bad. The only thing that I've missed so far is, like, economic controls, and it may be that I just haven't found them, but basically I was looking for a way to be like, produce this much coal, and then everybody go home and stop producing coal. It's not important, you know what I mean? I haven't been able to find anything like that around, and I would like to have those economic triggers where when you get to, like, a certain stack number of stone or of wood or of coal or of planks, that people will stop producing them uh, so that you're not wasting all of your wood or all of your things that go into producing the refined products. Uh, that's one of those things that I think every game like this should have, but I think that's pretty much my only complaint, and once again, I've looked around the UI a bit in between these edits to try to find it, and it does not appear as though I've seen it anywhere but it may exist somewhere i'm not exactly known for my ability to spot small pieces of a ui under duress while i'm actively recording this live and so anyways fabledom the early access seems to be off to a really good start i've played the game for about an hour it still seems like there's definitely a bunch more buildings left to go I'd probably assume, I mean, I don't know, check the reviews on Steam if you wanted to get an idea for how much gameplay is here. I can't imagine that it's like an enormous amount given the amount of stuff we've already unlocked in an hour, but it still seems like there's at least a couple hours more gameplay here and then from there just infinite expansion and playing around with the diplomatic ideas that the game has. And I'd be excited about that too. I, I do think it's a really good idea to kind of incorporate having neighbors and, and people that you've got to like stay happy with and whatnot around. I have one unit, one peasant. His name's Jeff. I can send him out there to go punch a guy. It's an act of war. You know what I mean? Sometimes Jeff got to punch a guy. It is what it is. But my name is Splattercat. I sit through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to to dip on the chopping block. We're fooling around with Fabledom, which I think is a really good addition to the banished slash banished tangential games uh, that are all kind of inside that wheelhouse. You know, farthest frontier, banished. Anno, all those styles of game. I, I think this has a really good style. I think it has nice flair. I think it stands out amidst the competition. And I've had fun with it so far, especially the little details like water filling in the wheel ruts on the roads and the little things like clotheslines in people's backyards and like the random placements of little things like chairs and things that are around the outside. It, it seems like they've got their heart in the right place with this one. I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. I appreciate you stopping on by. And that's about all I've got for you. Bye, folks.